Hello, this video is a demonstration how to install Cisco iOS XE REST API and deploy it to configure and manage selected features. In this demo, we use NAT, Network Address Translation, as an example. Representational State Transfer REST's is an architectural style run in a stateless client server model. It supports simple crude operation create, read, update, and delete operation using HTTP. It uses URI, Uniform Resource Identifier, to identify resources of interest. REST API is coming to ASR 1000, supported in iOS XE release 3.14 on ASR 1001 X and ASR 1002 X. It primarily for feature configuration, including VXLAN, Lisp, interface, routing, ACL, NAT and many other more. It can also be used to gather stats such as CPU and memory usage. It runs in a service container natively on the iOS XE route processor. It uses 1PK Python API under the hood. This demonstration consists of four steps. The first step, we need to download the OV package to the boot flash on the ASR 1000. Second, we need to install the software package. Then, we need to enable the REST API and activate the service container on the ASR 1000. Last, we will deploy the REST using curl. Curl is a command line tool and a library for transferring data using URL syntax. To save time, I already pre-download the OVA package onto the ASR 1002X in this demo. In addition to the classic iOS XE file and the wrong mount file, there is additional iOS XE remote management software to Second step, install the software package using the virtual service install command line. On the put flash, I already pre-download the OVA file. Now let's install it. It's showing here the installation process has begun. And this is a Cisco Sun service container application. And this virtual service is successfully installed. Now let's take a look at the virtual service. Show virtual service detail. And this is the name of the application, CSR management. Because ESR 1000 and CSR 1000V, they sharing the same operating system, iOS XE. So the service container for the REST API have the same application name. And at this point, there's no guest interface yet, and there's no guest route. So that is the next step we need. Step three, we need to enable REST API on the platform. 
first, we need to configure a management interface. And this the interface client is to communicate with the ASR1000 using HTTP. It is important to know that you cannot use the Gigabit Ethernet Zero, which is the built-in management gig interface on the raw processor for this communication. It has to use one of the in-band interface. Second step, we need to configure a virtual port group. A virtual port group provides networking for service container. And we configure unnumbered IP using the management interface Gigabit Ethernet 005 on the virtual port group. Then we configure the service container. The name of the service container we can give it any name. In this example, I give it the name REST underscore API. The container needs a guest IP. So this is the IP address used to communicate with by the client. And we configure the virtual port group as the gateway for the service container. And then we need to activate the service container. We also need to configure a static route upon the guest IP, which is the service container IP address, with the virtual port group 0 as the gateway. Last step, we need to configure the 1PK. The 1PK Python API is used under the hood for communication between the container and the iOS processes. So we need to configure in uh, the 1PK service set. So now let me copy paste those configuration onto the router. You can see that the service container is being activated, it will take a few minutes. At this point, the virtual service REST API is successfully activated and the interface virtual port group 0 is up. Now we can show virtual service details. So now you can see that REST API is the feature running in this service container. And 5.28.29.81 is the IP address for the guest interface. And 5.28.29.8 is the gateway for the service container. Now we are ready to deploy the REST API using curl. And in this example, show the REST API using POST and GET operation method to configure net pool and net rules and also retrieve net translation entries. Before we do that, 
we first have to est establish a session and get a token ID from the server. And in this window, you know, I'm going to use curve to deploy the REST API. And we need the token ID for the rest of the operation. So we're going to copy the token ID and we're going to replace it here with all the operations. So first, we are going to configure a net pool. And you can see that the net pool ID, the name of the pool is test4. It has a start IP address from 192.168.186.86 and it with 192.168.186.100. We're first going to check on the ESR1002X. To verify there's no pool. Then we're going to run a post operation to use REST API to configure the net pool in the system. So you can see that the net pool is created on the system. And we can verify that on the router. So the net pool is configured, is applied to the configuration. Next, we're going to configure the net rule. The rule here is that it it is a inside source for packet matching this ACL. It's going to generate the net transition entries using the pool. As is a path enabled net configuration. And it returns the net rule is configured, is created in the router. We verify that the net rule is applied in the configuration. Next, we're going to create net transition entry to make sure the net works. So we have the port channel interface is configured as the net outside interface. So we're going to pin an external IP address in the northbound of the uh, outside interface. Pin 192.168.186.80 and we're going to use source address uh, loopback1. And we're going to take a look at the translation table. So the inside local IP 101001 .10 is translated to inside global IP 192.168.186.86. Which is the first IP address in the pool. 
And now we're going back to retrieve the net transition entry using the REST API. And you can see that it returned back the transition entry we just saw a moment ago on the router. It has the, the outside local IP address. It also has the inside global IP address, which is 192.168.186.86. It has the inside local IP. It has inside local IP address ten 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 one, and this is the end of the demo. Thank you for watching.